The Richmond County Board of Commissioners could start the new year off with a change to a potentially problematic policy. During Tuesday's meeting, commissioners discussed amending the board's public comment policy, which First Amendment experts have said poses serious concerns for free speech. The policy dates back more than 20 years and requires those wishing to address commissioners to contact the board's clerk the Friday prior to the meeting, which is generally held on the first Tuesday of each month, and specify the subject matter or nature of comments to be made. Another part of the policy prohibits speakers from discussing items on the agenda for that meeting. Commissioner Andy Grooms told the RO that he had been trying to get the topic on the agenda for months. Grooms said that he'd like to do away with that rule altogether. Grooms told Chairman Jeff Smart in an email dated February 1st, as well as on Tuesday night, that Grooms also suggested amending the rule to allow potential speakers until the day after the agenda is made public to give them time to review it. Grooms acknowledged that a few county leaders have concerns, but he thinks the good outweighs the bad. Commissioner Tavares Bostic agrees, stating that everyone in the county should have an opportunity to come and state their case on whatever they want to state their case about. Chairman Jeff Smart said he agreed with the comments from both Grooms and Bostic. Although a decision wasn't on the agenda, Vice Chairman Justin Dawkins made a motion to have the policy revised as discussed, which would be presented at the January meeting, giving county staff adequate time to make the changes and have it reviewed by the county attorney. Police say no gun was found at Rockingham Middle School after an alleged threat was made from one student to another on social media. Rockingham Police Chief George Gillenwater told the RO that investigators confirmed Tuesday that the student who is accused of making the alleged threat was not armed at the school and that the gun seen in the photo was found at home. A mother posted to Facebook around 8 a.m. Tuesday morning in an alleged Snapchat screenshot reportedly sent to her daughter appearing to show a young boy holding up a small handgun with the caption, quote, don't come to school tomorrow, end quote. In the accompanying post, the mother names the student who allegedly sent the photo and says he has been messing with her daughter. Gillenwater said both students live outside of RPD's jurisdiction and the information gathered has been turned over to the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. Any disciplinary actions will be handled by Richmond County Schools and any criminal charges or juvenile petitions will be filed by the Sheriff's Office, he added. The Chief also said that the police had not been notified about the alleged threat before it was posted to social media. If they had been informed, Gilmore said the department could have taken measures before school started. Gilmore also said that if a parent feels their child is being threatened or bullied, he encourages them to contact law enforcement before going to social media. The RO reached out to the school system with questions just after noon on Tuesday and has yet to receive a response. Three more candidates entered state and local races in the upcoming 2022 election. The first candidate at the Richmond County Board of Elections office Tuesday morning was State Representative Ben Moss. While Moss is running for his second term in the North Carolina House of Representatives, the district he represents will be different. Moss currently serves House District 66, which in addition to Richmond, also includes Montgomery County and a sliver of northeastern Stanley. However, new maps passed by the state earlier this year lump Richmond with part of Moore County, currently represented by Jamie Bowles, to make the new District 52. Moss was elected to the seat in 2020 after serving a decade on the Richmond County Board of Commissioners, defeating former District Court Judge Scott Brewer. The House seat representing Richmond County has long been held by a Richmond County resident. Prior to Ken Goodman, Wayne and the late Melanie Goodwin served a combined seven terms. Records with the North Carolina State Board election show Bowles has not yet filed. Richmond County is also in another Senate district. The new District 29 takes away more in Scotland counties and adds Montgomery, the western half of Randolph, and southeastern Union. Senator Dave Craven filed to retain his seat on Tuesday, according to the Randolph County Board of Elections. Craven was appointed in the summer of 2020 to fill out the remainder of the term vacated by the resignation of Senator Jerry Tillman and was elected to the seat last November. Tom McKinnis switched his residency to Moore County to run for the new Senate District 21. Taking their first step in the right direction and trying to win the conference title, the Richmond Raiders eased past Southern Lee in their conference opener on Tuesday. 
Extending the team's winning streak to five games to begin the new campaign, the Raiders rolled past the Cavaliers 70-44. The Raiders collected their second straight victory of at least 23 points, limiting the Cavaliers to just 19 points in the first half. Richmond will face a tougher test on Friday when Pinecrest visits Raider Gymnasium for another SAC game. Tip-off is set for 7.30 p.m. Using another dominant performance as a unit, the Richmond Senior Girls basketball team extended their winning streak to three games on Tuesday. Opening conference play as well against Southern Lee at home, the Lady Raiders beat the Lady Cavaliers 57-13 behind a running clock. Taking advantage of Southern Lee's slow offensive performance, the Lady Raiders jumped out to a 34-5 halftime lead. A total of eight Lady Raiders scored in the win, which was a season high for the team. Head coach Tatum Mosley said part of Richmond's game plan was to attack the basket early and force turnovers using the press. Richmond will host Pinecrest on Friday for another home conference contest. Action will begin at 6 p.m. When we return, we've got your Live at 5 weather report. It's coming up after the break, so stay tuned. JC's in Rockingham has you covered for used appliances, parts, trailers, and storage. We have one of the largest selections of reconditioned washers, dryers, and refrigerators in the Sand Hills, and we offer free delivery to residents inside Richmond County. Come check out our variety of trailers for any hauling job and our storage buildings for the things you need out of the weather or house. We also carry parts and accessories for appliances, trailers, truck beds, and can order the things you need. That's JC's on South Hancock Street in Rockingham. Hometown heroes? Well, maybe. When it comes to backyard comfort and no pesky mosquitoes, call Brown Termite and Pest Control at 910-895-6410 or 910-276-8870. Their team of superheroes can take back control of your paradise. That's 910-895-6410 today. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at the Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. And welcome to your Wednesday Live at 5 Weather Report, Richmond County. Hope your day is going well out there and staying warm. As we have seen temperatures a little bit cooler than usual for the past couple of days. We have seen it get down into the 30s today. And we'll continue to see some cooler temperatures throughout the night as well. Uh, not quite as cold as it was this morning, but 6 o'clock, 43 degrees, 10 o'clock, 37 with some clear skies for tonight. Sunset will be at 5.07 p.m. with a waxing crescent moon phase. Of course, this morning we had plenty of rain come in as well. And thanks to that weather, uh, to that rain, rather, we have seen that burn ban being lifted in about 66 counties across the state today uh, as of reporting. Uh, that also includes Richmond County. So burn ban has been lifted here in Richmond County and some surrounding counties as well. Uh, so that'd be good news for those of you who need to get some stuff burned up. But uh, looking at tomorrow, we'll be able to see some temperatures that are hanging around the 50s and 30s for the low. Uh, not really a whole lot different from what we saw today, but there will be more party cloudy skies and rain chances for sure. Cumberland County will be seeing a high of 50 and a low of 38. Hope County a high of 50 and a low of 37. Robeson will be seeing a high of 52 in the low of 41, with Scotland seeing a high of 52 in the low of 39. Up in Moore County will be a high of 50 in the low of 36, with Richmond County seeing a high of 51 in the low of 38. Across the PD in Anson County, a high of 51 in the low of 40, with Marble seeing a high of 52 in the low of 41. Again, party class guys tomorrow should be looking pretty great for that. Uh, looking at seven day forecast, we are not done with the rain just yet. For, uh, this morning was really just kind of the uh, preview for what's to come for this weekend, especially early on. Thursday again though, high of 51, low of 38. 
Then on Friday, we have a high of 65 and a low of 57 with a 30% chance of rain in the afternoon. And then on Saturday, that chance of rain will carry over to a 50% chance in the afternoon, followed by a 60% chance in the evening, a high of 73 and a low of 41. So pretty wet day for Saturday. As we get into Sunday, it'll be sunny skies, high of 56, low of 29. And then on Monday, continuing to hang around the low 30s, four below, high of 62, low of 33. On Tuesday, continuing on with sunny skies, a high of 66 and a low of 38, and to round the seven day forecast. Wednesday, party class skies, low of 68, low of 39. Of course, tomorrow is the Christmas uh, parade in uh, downtown Hamlet. Uh, be at six o'clock. So uh, going back to that for a minute on Thursday, uh, should be looking pretty good for that. Of course, you want to bundle up. No rain at all to uh, rain on the parade, as the pun goes there. Uh, so it should be looking good tomorrow for that parade. Of course, we'll be out there as well here at Richmond Observer uh, with our usual parade coverage. So of course, stay tuned for that following the parade. That is going to do it for your live by weather report and for tonight's edition of Live at 5. For the latest news, sports, and events happening in Richmond County, you can always visit richmondobserver.com or download the free R app for your mobile devices. For the Live at 5 crew, I'm Russell Barger. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night, and have a great day, Richmond County. <laughs> it's that weekend. <laughs>